Welcome back, everyone, to Nanalisa Dawn. I'm your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury 33, whichever you prefer. And we have another match, this time in Aurelian. New maps. Jasper going for the Hovercraft Factory. Space T going for the Hovercraft Factory. Surprisingly, no ships. Was there an agreement beforehand to not go ships, or just trying to go for Mace? Okay, Jasper going for the Mace Rush. That's not surprising. I don't know why. I don't find that surprising from Jasper, but Mace Rush. On the other hand, Space T going for daggers, which is much more of a typical late game strategy. Like, just going for early harassment scouting. You're not trying to win the game in the first five minutes. You just, or first two minutes, rather. You're just trying to go in and see what's going on, which makes sense. So Space T going for the daggers. Not sure why they're going up all the way here, though. I guess they're figuring that Jasper might be trying to go for some tricky economic strategies over here. Just build up these metal extractors ASAP. Which I don't usually see. I mean, most of the time people on this map, at least when it first came out, we're playing ships, and playing ships on this map means... Well, actually, it doesn't mean much. You can easily expand. But we didn't see a lot of people expand very quickly. People seem to be very timid about expanding, which I'm not really sure why. I mean, to be quite honest, this map is... I mean, there's a lot of expansions here. You can easily expand, you can easily build up. Yeah, it's a bit harder to get defenses going, I suppose, but... It's also full of metal extractors, unlike, say, Shimmer Shore. And I think that was the problem, as people were used to Shimmer Shore. But I'm guessing that might also be why we're seeing Hovercraft now, as people have kind of gotten used to other stuff. And Jasper already prepared for this. I mean, they have everything set up properly to get rid of all these Hovercrafts. They just didn't have the maze in the right position. Honestly, not really sure what the maze is for, actually, at this point. It's not really... Be oh, I see what they're thinking. Jasper had it in front. They're expecting Space T to come in straightforwardly with the daggers, and Space T didn't do that, because why would you do that? I mean, it's a very simple thing. I suppose you could just do that, but I like the way Space T went. I mean, they... I thought, oh, they're trying to scout out the economy. But no, they're just going along in an awkward position, which makes sense. That's how you raid. Your opponent is not expecting it from that angle, and you go in from that angle. And you hit your opponent and damage some stuff. And at the same time, Space T expanding, so Space T is going to have a nice and strong economy afterwards. Though, I like the fact that Jasper is using the Mace's defense. They have it set up right next to their quill, so the quill can easily expand and get all that stuff set up. Finally, some expansion on this map early on. Oh, Okay, so finally, haven't had a chance to cast this map much, so maybe it's not a finally thing. But I'm glad to see people are expanding on this map rapidly. I'm glad to see both players expanding on this map rapidly. I, I really want to see this map as a more economic map, because it, it is. I mean, you have, like, 30 metal available on either side. Three. Yeah, 30 metal available on either side. So you can easily get this set up. I mean, 30 metal is enough to be able to get a second factory. It's enough to be able to get a few caretakers. If you really push it, start getting some reclaim and overdrive going, you can get 40, 50 metal. That's enough to start getting into some of the striders. Even 30 metal you can get into striders, but C striders are more expensive, so maybe not. Looks like Jasper is definitely playing more defensively. Like, they have everything set up to try to go for later game stuff. They have the maces, they have the claimers, not really any daggers. They're relying entirely on using pure defense with fast expansion, and that's not really working. Space T is expanding way faster. Similarly, on account of having more workers. I mean, there's only one quill here, maybe two. Yeah, a second quill has just been produced. While at the same time, Space T has what looks like four, no, two quills. More are in production quite rapidly, and they're just expanding without a care in the world. This is the thing. Space T... They don't have as much in the way of defenses. They have nothing in the way of defenses. In fact, they just got a mace. But the thing is, their economy is fine because they have the daggers up front. They've just been wrecking everything that Jasper's been trying to do, or at least putting Jasper on the back foot, so Jasper can't really attack. Now, Jasper is in a position to try to attack, but not really in a position to harass. Interesting, going for the Stardust, too. I don't know if I agree with that. Pretty sure the maces will outdamage that, or will live long enough to kill it, especially two maces and a Claymore. But, not a terrible idea. At the same time, though, Jasper having moved forward like this means that Space D pretty much has free reign. The Urchins don't have a great time dealing with the daggers, and at this point, I'm actually a bit surprised we don't see Jasper build up some of the Stardusts. Because seriously, if you think about it, Stardust would be perfect for dealing with daggers. And that's what Space D's been throwing at Jasper. But at the same time, Jasper coming in here just going for a straight assault. Not even caring, just essentially going, you know what, I got a bunch of mid-game units... Let's just destroy everything. Let's just wipe out as much as we can with mid-game units. Unfortunately, the Claymore was not near the Maces. If the Claymore was near the Maces, that would have gone very differently. The Maces could have defended it from the Daggers, and then would have helped. But even then, two Maces coming into the main base right off the bat is actually really strong. 
Again, unfortunately, not in position with each other, though. And that is going to lead to their death, and might actually lead to the game. Space decoming with yet another Claymore, and that shh, that'll be enough to at least wipe out a lot of Jasper's forces. But again, Jasper's way ahead economically. I mean, do they care? They lost a few daggers. They've got a ton of reclaim. How much reclaim to have to work with? Yeah, they got 700 metal of reclaim to work with. Space D's fine. I mean, that assault pretty much had to win the game, and it didn't. So Jasper's kind of in a tough spot. And I really would have rather had Jasper had all the units nearby. Like, let the Mesas defend the Claymores, let the Claymore come in, migrate in and out so it's firing off depth charges, not getting hit in the process. That would have been more than enough to wipe out this entire base. Had the Mesas stayed alive and moved in together, it could have destroyed the vast majority of this base just with the Mesas, and the Claymore adding in that extra bit of damage off the depth charges would have stopped any production coming in. And then the Claymore could have turned around, wiped out all the stuff came in, coming in from the back that Spacey had to pull back from the assault on Jasper's base. That would have been amazing! I mean, Jasper is still going for it again, but the problem is Jasper just does not have the economy to maintain this. They might barely be able to do this. Maybe. Like, there's an outside chance I could see them pulling this off if they happen to move in right now. Maybe. And micro it properly this time. But otherwise, I don't see it. At this point, they're playing pure defense. I think Jasper doesn't realize just how much Space D has expanded. And that Space D is really not afraid. Like, Jasper has been playing this match absolutely terrified. We're seeing them rarely expanding, rarely re-expanding, trying to set up units and not really the place to go for defense, and most importantly, not doing anything to stop Space D from expanding. Or trying to just trying to deal with that expansion by expanding themselves. And I can kind of see why. The daggers are certainly being a bit of a threat, but it's still not that big of a threat, really, when you think about it. Throw in a Stardust, you're good. But I think the thinking might be, oh, well, we have urchins. Urchins are what you do. Like, yes, urchins are a good choice, but Stardust do work in the water. Most defenses, in fact, work in the water. If you look at this, like, Faraday and Gauss are the only cheap defenses that don't work on water. Everything else works on water. It doesn't work for underwater, but hovercraft are not underwater. So unless we see a switch over to ships or to amphibots, Stardust will be fine. I really like what Space D's done here, it's just that Space D didn't really need to. Jasper did. So yeah, pro tip, urchins are great against submarines and sometimes ships. If they're playing ships, it's not a bad idea to have urchins, but other defenses work just fine on the water. So don't think that urchins are your only defensive option in water maps. And boy, this would have been a great opportunity to have Stardust because the amount of daggers coming in here shows that Space T really does not care about what Jasper's thrown out as far as any kind of riot units are concerned. That being said, Jasper's doing a good job at least getting some overdrive to keep themselves reasonably close in economy. It's not great, but it isn't bad. When you consider that Jasper's actually been pretty good when it comes to any attrition, this isn't too far off between them. I mean, looking at the numbers, yeah, Jasper's way behind for metal produced and metal used. Army Valley, however, is within 1,000. Like, within 20%. And considering that Jasper has basically a bunch of units that Space Team, or sorry, Space Team has a bunch of units that Jasper will counter, like as soon as Jasper gets a mace in range with any of the daggers, the daggers die. The lance is in range, starts wiping things out, any maces come in. Like, Jasper's in a position where if they fight any fights with their units in position properly, they're going to win. Space has just been playing a lot without doing that, and Jasper has no radar. Oh, if Jasper had radar. Going to be YouTube comments about that, I can tell. Yeah, just to preempt that, Jasper has no radar. That would have saved them from this assault right here that might be wiping out the command. Oh, they're not going to wipe their commander. The commander's not high enough, but still. This assault here... Oh, no, it is! Right, because daggers shoot underwater. Yeah, this this isn't good for the commander at all. I mean, Jasper at least is not too far out of position with their forces, but they were far enough out of position that this is still a problem. Actually, come no, they're done. They're, their commander's dead. They've lost a lot of their economy, too. Mostly their overdrive. I mean, this is probably going to be game from Space T here because Jasper didn't think this is land, but this is land. This is one thing I'm seeing with Space T is that clearly they have realized that this map works real well for hovercraft, or just at the very least realize there's stuff you can do with this map as far as any kind of harassment around the sides goes. And I'm glad to see that. I'm glad to see that this map is being used quite fully. I mean, obviously this section right here, the shiny hills, you can't really go on that. But yeah, this area here, the snow or ice or whatever. It's not hard to tell, actually. The plastic. That is... Sorry. <laughs> sorry, Aquanim. It's just not quite sure what you want to do with the specularity there. 
But yeah, that is... That's completely vehicle passable. Like, look at the map here. Yeah. Just no problems whatsoever. And it's clear that Jasper didn't expect that. They were thinking, oh, it's just the butterfly. That's all I have to worry about is just the water. Everything in the water is just the stuff on the water. And no, that's not how it works. Not for hovercraft. For ships, yes. For hovercraft, no. So Jasper, they had a chance. They kind of lost it. And it looks like they're desperately trying to stay in this game, but it's not going to happen. At least not the current setup. I mean, I don't know. The Lance, maybe. But the problem is Jasper's forces are simply not in position. Space T doesn't have to care. They can move the unit forces wherever the heck they want. They can split the forces into two armies. They have plenty of resources. It's not a concern. So just harass wherever. Keep Jasper from being able to expand and rebuild. And then you're good. That being said, if Jasper does get a good frontal assault on Space T's base, then Space T could lose everything. And the Lance is right here to be able to get rid of the Maces, so hey, there is that! The Maces are going down. The assault has been more or less stopped. Jasper just needs to rebuild to get some metal extractors back up. Go for a counterattack right now. Immediately go for a counterattack. Make sure your forces are defending each other, especially the Claymores and the Maces. Because that's the only real option. Ah, and that Mace is too low HP. And I was thinking, I was like, wait, that's less than 500 against five daggers. That is death. But hey, the claimer is able to still do some value. Of course, the problem is this assault coming back here again. Jasper's, oh, Jasper's commander actually survived. I didn't even notice that. Here I was thinking, oh, Jasper's commander is totally dead. Nope, they survived until now-ish. Maybe. Possibly. Hard to say, actually. Jasper's commander should go down to the next depth charge. Yeah, that, that'll be it. That is Jasper's commander down. Lost about 200 metal in the process. Same time coming with some harassment. I mean, one mace is not able to be to start us. So good job, Space T. You got value from the defensive structure. Worked better than I expected. Same time, though, this is the thing when you have a lot of economy. Space T has been just investing all their money into gunships. All their money into 24 locusts, or at least 24 locusts. This is going to be it. I mean, I appreciate that Jasper's going for the counterattack. I appreciate they had a lot of forces that could help deal with the ground stuff or the hover stuff. They just have nothing that can actually deal with all this. Again, another reason why Stardusts are a really good idea. Surprise locusts are not an issue you have to worry about. Surprise air, maybe, or surprise gunship, sure, but not surprise locusts specifically. And yeah, that should be a Jasper. Looks like they're going for a counterattack, and if this counterattack does work, which I seriously doubt, then I guess there's a chance, but yeah, that's not going to happen. This is over. This is it. Locust coming in here. We'll be able to wipe out everything Jasper's built up. And most of Jasper's defensive forces are in the back, trying to help the Locust, but not really managing. So yeah, that is... That's it. Space D showing that they know how to hover. I mean, that wasn't too hard. That was basically just a matter of Space D showing that they don't just go in the straightforward paths. Because that... Why would you? Really? In general, why would you? That doesn't make sense. But it's an obvious thing, which is why Space T didn't do it. And to be fair, Jasper actually was fairly close in Army Valley for most of the game. Really up till the very end, but again, that was because Space T had such a massively economic lead from the beginning. It's just that Jasper was really efficient when it came to, a, to killing. I mean, they had a bunch of maces against a bunch of daggers, and some claimers as well to get rid of the maces. Jasper clearly had a good idea when it came to counterstructure. They just didn't have a good idea when it came to how much to expand, where to expand, and how to deal with their opponent's expansions, and how much their opponent had expanded relatively. So, bit of an issue there. I'm not sure how that would work otherwise. I mean, it felt like it was just kind of the only way things could have gone. But, eh. I could see Jasper having, if they did some better micro on their early assault, they actually could have managed, like when they were attacking the main base with a couple claymores, or the claymores and a couple maces, I could I could see that actually have working. I can't grammar today. I could see that actually working. If the units were in the right position. If they were close enough together that the maces were protecting the claymores from the daggers, that would have been a lot of damage. That could have completely undermined Space T, because that would have been a great timing attack. But that was a great timing attack. It just didn't get executed properly. Anyway, that is going to be that match. So the next match is going to be Sparkles and 400 on New Yamas. So that'll be up in a couple minutes. Stay tuned. <laughs>